Salutations, celestial sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? A waxing crescent moon coupled with still early sunsets means lots of opportunities for lunar observing. We begin with a lovely crescent early in the week. Look right after sunset before it drops below the horizon. Mare Crisium always dominates this phase of the moon. Look for 64 kilometers wide Macrobius just west of the large basin. With high magnification and the right angle, terraces inside this crater may be visible. More interesting, perhaps, is Gutenberg to the south, just off of Mare Fecunditatis. A 71 kilometers diameter crater, its irregular shape is due to Gutenberg E, a crater that flooded with lava, as well as Gutenberg C that has several peaks and clefts. This area is well worth seeking out and observing with most any small telescope using as much magnification as your scope will support. Gutenberg A is the small crater to the west of the main one, though it may not even be visible until at least a day, perhaps two days, later. Watch this area as the lunar terminator, or line of sunlight and shadow, moves across the surface night by night. Later in the week on the 6th, the moon has revolved to first quarter phase and reveals seemingly stunning peaks along Montes Caucasus and Montes Apenninus. Look at how striking the contrast is on Menelaus at the southern tip of Mare Serenitatis. This 27 kilometers crater has a central peak. Can you spot it on Thursday? If not, try for the slightly larger 39 kilometers crater Manilius that not only has its own central peak, but terraces on the crater walls too. Late into that night, or before dawn for Europe, the lunar X is visible. More info on that at eyesonthesky.com. And now this week's Dark Sky Fact. Last week I wrote about the Light Pollution Reduction Challenge, a call to all amateur astronomers to change just one thing about their own lighting, or take steps towards reducing street lights, or getting other lighting fixtures replaced with better ones. It can be as simple as replacing a light bulb in a post lamp. If you do work towards this, take a before and after picture, and I may highlight your work here in a future Dark Sky Fact segment. Look for Montes Apenninus throughout the latter part of the week and into the weekend. This nearly 650 kilometers long mountain range is perhaps the most dramatic one to see on the moon. It begins at Mount Hadley in the east, close to where Apollo 15 landed on August 7, 1971. It then stretches southwest, finally terminating at the crater Eratosthenes. By Saturday, when there are still wonderful shadows helping to contrast the peaks along Montes Apenninus, be sure to drop your telescope's gaze south into Mare Nubium. In the eastern section of this basin is Rupes Recta, more commonly known as the Straight Wall. Find it between the dual crater Thebit, which has a large 57 kilometers main crater, and a 20 kilometer one that has breached its rim at a later date and the small 17 kilometers wide Bert, which is largely alone in the eastern section of Mare Nubium. Rupes Recta is a 7 degree slope that the angle of the sun and its shadow accentuate, but at 110 kilometers in length, 2.5 kilometers width, and 240 to 300 meters in height, we can see this nearly straight line with most any small telescope. Give it a try this week. Every naked eye planet is visible this week. Mercury is still visible in the waning twilight at magnitude zero early in the week, but drops towards the horizon and loses a full magnitude by the weekend. Jupiter continues cruising through Gemini, looking a bit like the silver ball in a pinball machine. Mars is still slowly sweeping past Spica and is high enough to be observable in scopes by midnight, though better an hour later. Saturn breaches the horizon around that time, but itself won't be much to see for another hour or two in the wee hours of the morning. It is perhaps better for early risers when it's high in the sky, and Venus is also making elevation gains before sunrise. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.